there, welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ryan. And our last episode uh, was all about the Force Bend treasure and one man's solution. His name, Glenn Coughlin. He is from Australia and he claims that he has solved the poem. Uh, he is the only person to have satellite photos of the actual chest. And that brings us to something that I want to dis discuss with you, Ronnie. A lot of people um, commented that Glenn had no idea what he was doing and they had no appreciation nor respect for uh, his search. And you had something you mentioned to me earlier about boots on the ground. I mean, he's he's been there and not only has he worked with the, the poem, but he's also taken little... I call them Easter eggs that Finn has left laying around in other books and on interviews. And we showed some of those uh, on our last broadcast. Uh, if you wish to uh, see them for yourself, you can watch the show or go to Glenn Coughlin's Facebook page, which is G-L-E-N. Coughlin is C-A-U-G-H-L-A-N. Uh, Glenn Coughlin. C-O-U. Yeah. Actually, C O U G H L A N. What did I say? Eh? G yes. C -A -N. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. There you go. We have it now. Uh, so, boots on the ground, Ronnie. <clears throat> uh, a lot of people claim they have the solve. Uh, yeah, but he actually has a picture. So, and hey, could it be, you know, could it be somehow photoshopped? Yeah, possible. Um, could it be a tent? Who knows? It, when we show the location of where he claims it should be exactly, it looks like it would be setting on a rock, but it also looks like it would be somewhat out in the open. True, yep. Uh, he, Glenn claims that there is a tree that has fallen. You can see it in the satellite photos where it's changed. Not You can't see it falling. You can see where it fell and um, it, it may or may not have some, something to do with the movement of that chest. But um, as you saw in our episode, Glenn failed uh, to find the treasure. But the point is, if you're sitting at home and you're trying to figure this out and you are trolling, and some say that I encouraged the trolling, um, to an extent maybe I guess I did, but look, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. And so I thought, well, what if I put the shoe on the other foot? Okay. What if I were just a viewer of YouTube shows and had a fascination with the fan treasure? And what if this person who just sent a nasty ass comment to us, let's say they were the one that had a YouTube show and I watched it. If I were a Fen treasure hunter and I saw something that I didn't believe to be correct, I would stop watching it. Right. But here's the thing. My opinion is, unless you're out there actively looking for it or you have spent quite a bit of time looking for it, you have got zero credibility with us as far as trolling this. I've been called a lot of things this week, Ronnie. A <laughs> I lot. Called you, I called you a few things myself. <laughs> well, that's beyond the treasure. Uh, I've been called arrogant. I've been called, um, what else have I been called? Stupid. Uh, I have been called ignorant. And you know what? I like to think I have thin skin and I'm okay. If that's what you feel compelled to say, then so be it. But my point simply is this. If you don't like our episodes, don't watch. Yeah. It's okay. We did not come out and personally say this is the only solve. What we did was we took a guy who made a very good case with us about his solve and went to the extent that he rented a helicopter and flew it into a national park to look for this in the snow, and that isn't allowed. 
Nobody will ever know who that helicopter pilot is, <laughs> thank goodness. But uh, he did it, and Glenn paid for that as well. So I'm not saying let's reward a guy just because he tried. We're not big on participation trophies, right. per se. But I will say that it was somewhat credible. And completely, maybe not. Comprehensive, yeah. I think it's the most comprehensive solve we've seen that covers every clue and also goes through and points out places in the books, not one book, but the books, and in his interviews where he alludes to something or he drops a, a very subtle clue, maybe without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Subconsciously. Very subconsciously. And you know, when you, when a police officer, when we interview people, they give a lot of stuff away subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is going to be Fenn's downfall right there. Well, that may be why we've heard nothing from the Fenn camp. That's very possible. Maybe people are so close that one slip of the tongue and bam, it's out. It's, he's afraid to disclose anything else. All right. So uh, what I wanted to make clear on this episode is this. Um, we mean no disrespect to Dale or to Mr. Fenn. No. Um, Glenn did have some things to say about them, uh, but it actually was in good conscience. He's concerned that others may die looking for a treasure that may not possibly be there. Now, are we backing up on this? No. We're not backwheeling, backpedaling. No. We're just presenting to you what one man thought to be a possible solution to this, to the degree that he was willing to reveal everything and every bit of his research leading up to this. And um, Hey, if I see something more credible, I'm right behind it. We are in talks right now with Bill Gorman. And a lot of people say not so nice things about Bill Gorman. Bill likes, uh, likes to take a lot of pictures. He is in the Fen Zone, I believe back in the Fen Zone now, and uh, which is within the 500 feet range. And he has a certain area that he's working towards. Uh, we will have an interview with him coming up very soon. He's agreed to come on the program and um, that is gonna be a very time consuming episode because he has so many pictures that are pertinent. Right. All right, so Ronnie, at this point in the show, I would like to share some of the comments that we received. Okay. All right, I'm going to go first. All right. This is from Entropic Order, and it was one of the first that we uh, got. And he says, great clickbait, gentlemen. Where's your subscriber numbers? Oh, wait, my bad. Uh, as of this taping, we have 165 subscribers. I would love to have a much larger number than that. I'll be honest with you. Uh, it's one of the most difficult things to achieve in a YouTube channel is having people subscribe to your channel. And so when people do, we enthusiastically thank them for doing so as best that we possibly can. So for those of you that have subscribed to our channel, we appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, those of you that have not yet, please click the subscriber button. You'll find it below. Great clickbait, gentlemen. Just so we can rub it in this guy's face, yes. if nothing else. Okay, so <laughs> I wrote back, uh, let's see. Uh, brave comment from a guy whose own page only has one subscriber. Uh, this channel doesn't have any compet, uh, content. You're an expert in Tropic. He wrote, you know, that would be funny if I were a YouTube creator, but to let you two rocket scientists in on a little secret, another name we were called. Yeah. Another one who, anyone who joins YouTube gets their own little channel set up. Even those like myself who only watch the content. Nice try, genius boys. Better luck next time. Genius boys. Yeah, I'll accept that. Ronnie, what did you say? <laughs> well, he also, he called us rocket scientists and I told him, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. And, and Tropic writes back, Corvette Ronnie, now that's funny. Thank you. <laughs> See... <laughs> In Tropic Order, if you can't see the effort made in the preparation, production, and execution to bring a professional show to our viewers, don't watch. Right. It's easy to criticize when you have no vested interest or creativity 
of your own to speak of. Thanks for the view. I'm sure you're a great guy. You can always reach me via my email. And I have given that, which is Lou at menaresosmart.com. Yeah. Ronnie, you got something you want to share? Well, I've got this one that just, it made me giggle because it's it's a little bit incorrect. Uh, Angelo Poblete. He wrote, this guy Glenn is full of this, and then in quotes, uh, backwards. So he's wanting you to take the word this and turn backwards, which spells nothing. That would be S-I-H-T. Seat. Yeah. So I know where he's trying to go with this, but yeah, this backwards doesn't spell what he's thinking of. Uh, so... Yeah, thank you very much for that attempt. Nice try. Appreciate it. <laughs> Sled neck. Oh. Hey, buddy, how you doing? I know you're watching our episode. We appreciate that. Uh, we had a little com uh, conversation this week. He says, double D made more sense. That's this other guy that had some wacko thoughts on the, the search. These guys are a dime a dozen. Don't believe the hype. And I wrote back, Sled neck, I thought you and me were good. That was kind of a crappy comment. And he says, oh, no, not you smart guys. Oh, thank you. Uh, the ones that claim it is found, hoax, recovered, etc. I'm telling you, smart guys, not to believe the hype. And then he goes on to say, just watch this again, guys. You just seem so eager to believe this guy's thoughts. I have to ask why. Because he has a pixelated picture? Otherwise, I saw no proof or facts. Just a weak solve based on his thoughts of what the poem means to him. A true investigator understands that there is no place for assumption. The clues must lead you. You can't lead the clues. I also find the story a bit too much. Let's meet the pilot of the helicopter to verify his story of flying him in, into an avalanche prone area. Surely with such a trip, he took the time to record parts of the event. You question motive, but of the wrong suspect. Then you stated his possible motive and you really shouldn't criticize books you haven't bothered to read. I find them entertaining and well done. Now we did say, and he was not the, the greatest writer in the world. Uh, yeah. Um, Maybe lacks a little something there. Yeah. And, and you know what? I apologize. Truth of the matter is, no, I have not read the book. Uh, we didn't come to, into this as treasure hunters. No. We came into this as broadcasters. And observers. Observers. Yeah. Very good, Ronnie. Yep. All right. You have something else you want to share? Yeah. So this one's from D. Santelanes. And he says, Fail. Sorry, guys, but I got an email from Forrest Finn that the treasure is still out there. Huh. He won't respond to anybody else, but he obviously is in close email contact with D. Yeah. Um, and then I just happened to drop, I can't help but wonder by, why Mr. Finn won't respond to any of Glenn's emails. Um, and then he goes on to say, well, Glenn could be wrong or could be staged. I mean, there's at least eight people who claim they have found the treasure spot, but there was no treasure. He got this email in mid-June, and honestly, D still thinks it's out there. You know, D, I'm and this, and I make this comment. I'm not telling people, you know, stop searching because it's not there anymore. But I'm telling people be very careful and be very vigilant when you're out there. Because it is still dangerous. There are a lot of wild animals. There's fast moving water. Uh, lots and lots of perils where people can get hurt. And I, I, I know in my heart of hearts that was not in Forest Fen's, uh, that, that's not what he wanted to happen when people were looking for this. He wanted people to go out and enjoy the outdoors. And I'm still 100% behind that. However, uh, if the treasure's not there, you're searching for nothing, but you are still gaining the experience of the outdoors. That pretty much explains it right there, Ronnie. I yep. think you told that pretty well. Um, Edna Perviance says, I enjoy your videos. Going to check your info on this. Intriguing, whether it is accurate or not. Some can mislead. Fan said it is not a dangerous place. He would have obviously reasons to cover himself by telling searchers that the area is not dangerous, even though it could be. I don't know when he first stated it's not a dangerous place. Uh, let's see what else. I believe Fenn hit his cachet before he was 79 or 80 years old. He's only telling searchers don't go where a 79 or 80 year old person can't go. 
doesn't mean he wasn't really the age when he hit it. Thank you for posting Men Are So Smart, and thank you, Edna. We appreciate that. One of the things that came up this week is, two things, actually, uh, embellishment. Right. And uh, we all know that Forrest had, has admitted to being a bit of an embellisher. Uh, I think that Glenn, to a degree, takes that a little too literally sometimes. Um, sometimes that can be a very broad uh, brush stroke when you say, well, he admits that sometimes he embellishes. You can't apply that to everything. Right. Um, so one of the things that came up, uh, part two of this statement, is he never said anything about a horse. Now, some people say, and this is, this is uh, really critical here, some people say, then why did it take two trips if he was on a horse? Well, let me put it to you this way. I don't know what people estimate this treasure weighs. I can't remember. Uh, I think it's 25 pounds. 25 pounds, say. Let me just tell you, I can barely make it from the parking lot to the lanes with my bowling ball in my hand. Mm -hmm. So for somebody to walk, and I think it's estimated, people generally think that from a place where you can park your car or a vehicle to the spot is at least eight miles. I can't imagine walking with even a 15 pound bowling ball eight miles. There's no, there's no way. And I'm a fairly big strapping lad. Um, there's, there's no way on God's green earth that Forrest Fenn could carry even say a 20 pound treasure chest more than a mile. Uh, it's just, it's not happening. He had to have, and his one, one guy said he thought it was a pit bike, which are those. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which he could throw in the back, back seat of his car. Right. Hey, you know what? That's possible. I'm still, because Forrest is a, a bit of a, a horseman, I'm still of, of the belief that, hey, he strapped it to the back of a horse. Uh, a horse could easily navigate uh, a fast moving waterway. Um, and you'd be there, you'd have a very fairly secure hiding place, someplace where people just out wandering around aren't gonna stumble across it. Uh, I think that's probably in my mind, the biggest thing that Glenn produced was that, you know, it's on a little bit of a, a little bit of an island. So. Um, yeah, an island, uh, <clears throat> there's a word for it. A fort. That's it. A fjord. If I can afford it, <laughs> I can afford it. Uh, Carly Pirellis, uh, she says, um, oh, she talks about that too. Uh, I, She says, uh, Forrest has said multiple times he walked twice from his car and traveled less than a few miles. There is the fact that this all is wrong. Uh, I said, I'm sorry, Carly, but I'm not sure I remember him saying specifically that he mileage. walked twice, walked twice. He made two trips. I do, however, remember him saying it was too far to walk, to tell the truth, but not all of the truth. Uh, she says, here is what he said on writing from Dale Neitzel's video on Vimeo regarding For Whom the Bell Tolls. For Fan says, in my book, I've made statements that were not true, just to see if anybody would catch it. Wow, that's deception. One was about the First World War and for whom the bell tolls. It wasn't the First World War. It was the Spanish Revolution. For three or four years, nobody said a word about that. Forrest has said there are clues, hints, and aberrations in the book. This, to me, is an aberration. You wouldn't expect someone to give the wrong plot to a book you were describing, so it draws your attention. You thought it meant that the word Spanish is the clue. That's fine. Problem is, your solve was not correct because you didn't find the treasure. Therefore, instead of arguing that someone found it already, maybe you should just accept the fact that you were wrong and that more than likely your interpretations of the meaning of the aberration were wrong as well. Now, that brings me to this, the brown house. You'll recall that I suggested a while back that maybe we should just think of it literally. 
as a brown house. And that's what Glenn had found. And that's one of the things that drew the two of us together, Glenn and I. Um, now, someone made a very good point I, I was looking for here. I'm sorry, but it, it, you'll find it if you read our comments. Um, someone was saying a brown house would not be around in a thousand years. And that's really a key point because does we've said in the past that Forrest wants somebody to find this treasure. Right. And we are now of the mindset that that is not the case at all. That is not the case at all. Yeah. He wants his legacy to go on for many, many years. And Glenn is suggesting that maybe that's why the treasure is gone because so many people are really very close to it. That makes, makes perfect sense. And if this pixelated picture showing some sort of object is viewable from satellite on Google Earth, what's to say that Forrest, who uses a computer, right. obviously he sends emails to people. He even sent the person a happy birthday the other day. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh. So uh, obviously he's on there. Maybe, what's to say that he can't see that package? Right. Or like, that maybe when he did see it, he panicked. Like, Rut row, uh, I gotta go get this and maybe hide it under something or in something or just not leave it right out in the open. Yeah. All right, hey, this next comment, <laughs> I like it, but it's it hurts a little bit. Uh, you all have been working on this treasure project for three whole weeks. Okay, more like maybe two months. Yeah. <laughs> Keep up the good work, better than watching Star Search. Your imagination is expanding right before us, uh, right on. Much love to you all. Remember, the 80-year-old guy had to get there two times. Okay, but he could have got there two times on horseback or on a pit bike, and I, can't, I wish I could find that comment. I remember. But see, here's the thing. If it's just a 25-pound chest and he's on horseback, why does he need to make two trips? A horse can carry 25 pounds that far. Oh, easily. Yeah. So, and that last comment was from Davio 22. Yeah, Davio 22, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we want to thank you and acknowledge you for sending your... your yeah. um, and Glenn also said, you're taking Fenn at his word. If you do that, you overlook the rules. He does not tell the truth or all the truth. Uh, Fenn said he embellishes research and learn. Jim White says, you think that is a great and logical solve? You should hear me and mine and see mine. All the clues fit much better and an 80 year old man can get there. And I am keeping quiet, not trying to get publicity. There are hundreds, if not thousands of solves out there that fit the clues much better than this one. Hmm. I don't know. I would, I would disagree with that because I haven't seen well, not that everybody that's searching is in contact with us every day, but right. the people who have shared their partial solves uh, are just that. They're partial solves. They've not put uh, a clue together with a solve for every single one of those nine. And it starts with warm waters. Yeah. So until somebody shows me nine solves for nine clues. I, I'm uninterested in anything else you have to say. Arthur Donnelly says, I think men are so smart, they are stupid. <laughs> that Were guy, that smart? He might be onto something there. I, maybe we should change the name of the show. <laughs> men are so smart, they are stupid. <laughs> Welcome, I'm Lou Gallagher. We already did that. Uh, ben Parisi says, Blaze Mountain is 10,384, which Forrest claims the treasure is someplace under 10,200 feet. Uh, you know what? Those numbers are disputed all the time. All and the time. I'm not honestly sure that a topographic map lists it broken down to the exact foot. Uh, I think they go, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think they're broken down into 200 or 250 foot intervals. So... Um, Let's see, anything else you want to share? Uh, we gave the coordinates to where Glenn said that the treasure was, and Bill Kaiser says 45.22.36. 
I think he got that from the Sir Mix-a-Lot song, right? <laughs> yeah, that's where well, it came from. She got big butt, but it sounds more like the uh, ACDC song, uh, Whole Lot of Rosie to me. Whole Lot of Rosie. Yeah. Wait, yeah. we can't do that. Oh, so, no, yeah. we can't do that. Well, it wasn't Mark seconds. Chatham says, good job, guys. Very entertaining. Uh, goes on to say, click, please. Um, Glenn, no problem, chap. It always takes guts to put your ideas out there. Some will always be mad because it does not meet their monetary needs. But it is a very good idea. And Glenn got back to him. And yeah. Glenn has, uh, has actually been very good about responding Super to a active. lot of yours. Yeah, you know? very, very active in this. Uh, I don't control what he says. He says what he says. Uh, the, and, and, and keep in mind, too, if you're going to leave us a comment on this episode, which you'll find on our YouTube page, obviously, because you're watching, um, he says that uh, there's a big time difference. So he's in Australia. So, oh, that's uh, right. You know, it's it's like already tomorrow there. It's literally, I think it's, they're 12 hours ahead. If I'm I, not it's mistaken. roughly it's 12 to 13. Yep. So if you leave him a comment, he will get back to you. Uh, he is really not replying lately to the um, overtly trolling type people. But, right. All right. Uh, anything else you want to get to, Ron? Yeah, the one other one, uh, this will aware uh, says, I can see a box on a satellite image. Perhaps Fenn has access to a satellite since uh, since he is involved in underwater exploration company, so he may be able to zoom in and check on it. He did say that if you could zoom in a little more, you could see it. If I could speak to that for a second, there's one thing to keep in mind. Do you remember we used to have uh, phones that were about seven times the size of this, and they came in a bag, <laughs> right? and that was called a cellular phone? Yes. <coughs> Technology has changed. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> your cell phone and your lifeline is this big now. And the same applies in this case. Um, as per when Forrest put the treasure in place, the technology has now changed in satellites so much. <clears throat> and Glenn <clears throat> has pretty much, in fact, I can't, no, I can't do that. My phone's in the thing there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glenn is awaiting... <clears throat> Uh, some of the very newest technology on satellite photo imagery, and he should have something more that he will share with us coming up <clears throat> in the next one to two weeks. Well, and I can tell you this. We have cameras at my work site. I work a security location. Um, we have cameras that cost mm, almost a million dollars. And in the last two years... They have gotten so much incredibly better. They're not much more expensive, but as far as the picture quality, it's amazing. And that's just in two years. Uh, can you imagine since this first run was taken, what do we think, maybe 2014 or mm -hmm. so? Yeah. That's four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, technology in every type of camera system. And there are people working on that technology every day as well. Right. It's so, just, you know, it, it, every day, cameras, computers, phones get better, smaller, faster. Yeah. Uh, Perry Stevens, how will a brown house be there in a thousand years? Appreciate your comment. Brian Bailey says, stopped at eight miles. Forrest Fenn didn't walk far from his car, thinking his backyard works. Maybe it's in near Santa Fe, New Mexico. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not ruling anything out. No. <laughs> uh, here's, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encapsulize this whole thing for us. And I know many of you feel this way as well. Until that treasure, or let's just say chest, is presented to Forrest Fenn, the bracelet is given back to him, mm -hmm. there is no solve. Right. Uh, there is no solve. There are lots of people who think they have solves. Some who don't even get off the couch. Right. Uh -huh. And that's okay. Why, again, I say, why you feel so compelled that you have to leave a nasty comment is beyond me. If I were you, I would either just dislike the episode or move on. Right. Click on to something else. And one other thing I wanted to mention before we get out of here, because this is running really long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wh what was the name of that show that I told you about? The flip side oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of the Forest Fen treasure right. left us a comment. It was right at the beginning, if I remember. Um, 
This is nothing more than a cut and paste of 2013 thinking. You guys, I watched your show the other night, and it was a live show. It's really a pretty cool show, Ronnie. I'll have to look at it. Um, I, if you have some time, maybe later this afternoon or tomorrow. Um, it's called The Flip Side of Forest Fen's Treasure Hunt. It's hosted by four people. It looks kind of like the Brady Bunch screen. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a very good show, uh, and we encourage you to check that out as well. And thank you very much for uh, speaking of us. We appreciate it. Okay, Ronnie, uh, Forrest Fen. Wow, what a week it was, huh? Big week. Yeah, I think we had close to 300 comments. Yeah, and oh, they're we, still coming in. Yeah, and we try to reply to every single one of them. Yep. Unless it's just unbelievable. You know, we may just skip you. Well, and plus, we have some comments that are still up for review we haven't looked at yet. So right. if you don't see your comment under the video, it just means some of them, uh, they have to be reviewed before they can be... It's, it's a YouTube thing. It's policy. a YouTube thing. It's not us. Yeah. It's YouTube. So we have to look at them. We have to say, yes, it applies, or and yes, it's not spam. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and post it. We're not we're not holding anything back, but please kind of refrain from profanity. And, yeah, vulgarity, uh, that yeah, sort of thing. It's just not necessary. That's not necessary. You know, we're grown people here. Right. And another thing, too. You know what? We do this show for fun. Yeah. Uh, we are not going to steal your treasure. No. We are never going to find the treasure, and no. it's likely that we may never read the book. <laughs> we are fascinated by the story, yeah. but that's because men are fascinated by treasure hunting. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, remember making a treasure map when you were a kid? Oh, of course. X marks five, the spot. Five paces from the big rock. Yeah. And, oh, God. Yeah. Those were great. So we hope that you enjoy watching this program. Uh, the feedback that we get is that we have a great camaraderie and a chemistry between the two of us, which, if you didn't already know, our friendship goes back like 43 years. Yeah. So we know each other pretty well. Only seems like 42. Yeah, it seems more like 80 to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, we enjoy the doing this show, and we hope that you enjoy that chemistry between the two of us. And honestly, we have so many other topics that we cover as well yeah. that we would hope... That maybe when you get time, break away from the hunting the treasure. Uh, maybe you'll check out one of our other episodes. Uh, you'll find them all listed below, along with our emails. What's yours? Uh, Ronnie at menaresosmart.com. R O N N I E. And mine yeah. is Lou, L O U, at menaresosmart.com. Uh, some of the comments that we get here are inappropriate for the page itself. And sometimes you want to remain somewhat anonymous. It, it, the best way may be to email us yep. uh, in as much as we reply to your comments as they come in. The same applies to email yep. that we get as well. All right, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Good luck in your search for the treasure, my friends. We'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart.